Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is going to be your 28th lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. In the previous lesson, we looked at all the factors that you have to understand and know about to construct your shoulders. In today's lesson, we're going to first base the shoulder seams and then canvas them. Then we're going to mark the armhole. And last but not least, we're going to insert our Pagoda shoulder pad. Are you ready? Let's do this. Take your jacket. Make sure it doesn't have any creases. If there are creases, take them out. Once you have taken the creases out, I want you to position the jacket just like this. Then I want you to take the correct side of the forepart and pair that with the correct side of the back. Once you've done that, you'll end up with something like this. Then take both shoulders, flip the jacket. Now you have the back shoulders facing you with underneath them the front shoulders. In the previous lesson, we created a shoulder pad. This shoulder pad has a particular shape, okay? Now, we have to transfer the shape of this saddle onto our fabric. To do that, we have to hollow out our seams. How much do we hollow out is dependent on, of course, the same pattern that created this pad. To know how much we have to hollow out these seams, we are going to use our patterns. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that in the following way. Take one of your shoulder pads, just for reference, so everything is clear. Now, if we split the shoulder pad, we have a small part and a big part. The bigger part is for the back, the smaller part is for the front. Now, our pattern, of course, can be laid on top of our shoulder pad, just to make sure that we are not getting it wrong. This part will sit against the forepart shoulder, this part will sit against the back shoulder. Take these patterns and mark a seam off from the edge that we're going to join them from on both. That seam allowance is five millimeters. Match one end by matching the sewing lines and do the same on the other end. Like so. Do the same with the other two half. Mark, 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 mark. Match, pin. It doesn't matter whether you have one on top of the other or vice versa, as long as you've just got these two seams matched. So what this does is it creates a shoulder pad with a dart in the middle. If we get all these end points matched, we have this dart. If we draw a line through this dart, this double dart, and we measure from the center line of the dart to one edge, we see an intake of half an inch and the same goes on the other side, okay? So the intake of our dart in total is half an inch. Now, if you're following this with our pattern from your purple box or our website, it may be, first of all, that the F1 and the back one and the F2 and the back two are not the same. However, the principle is the same. The two small patterns are for the front, the two big patterns are for the back. What you'll notice is when you're matching these seams is that first of all, this dart is asymmetrical and also it's not as big as this dart. So the intake is not the same. Why is there a difference here? This pattern, has the hollowing forwards of the seam design incorporated. It's, however, not relevant at all. This one has not incorporated the hollowing forwards, so the seam design. Remember in the shoulder theory, I talked to you about seam design. Here we have a concave line. Here we have a convex line. Once these two go together, they create a curved forward seam. The surface, however, remains flat okay so the reason why we have an asymmetrical dart here is because this is a reflection of this curved forward seam i did not do that here both of them are correct and you can choose whichever way you go what is important regardless of the pattern that you're using 
is for you to join the back half and the front halves together like we've done and connect the end points of our pad. Draw that line that I did and measure what the intake on either side is. Now, if you do that here, well, you don't really have an intake on one side. So what do you do? You take the total intake, which is 5 eighths right here, and you split that in two. That gives us about a good quarter of an inch. So roughly speaking, six millimeters, seven millimeters. You understand what I did? So whatever the total intake is, divide that by two, okay? Since I'm going to use this pattern, I'm going to use that half an inch. So what do we do? Take your front shoulder, mark a chalk line along the neck curve, mark a chalk line along the front shoulder that's on the mark stitches, and a chalk line along the armhole. Then find the middle point between these two corners, so roughly here, and hollow out half an inch. That's one half of the total intake of our shoulder pad, okay? Mark a curve, smooth through that, from one corner to the other. Now here, what you'll notice, because we already had a convex line, the hollowing out creates a pretty much straight seam. Once you've done that, thread your needle and run a stitch of a quarter of an inch long, that's the stitch length, through this new line. So this new line is actually the edge of our pattern now. We have applied a hollowing on whatever the seam design was. So not only will our seam be curved forwards, but it also will have a saddle-like surface shape. Like so. Leave about two and a half to three inches of slack on either side and do not fasten on or off. We are going to stretch this seam. That stretching will take up some of this thread, okay? Once you've done one side, do exactly the same with the other. Again, mark the neck curve, mark the armhole, mark the shoulder. Find the middle, apply half of the total intake. Total intake is about one inch. Half of that is going to be half an inch. So in between the shoulder point, that's the corner of the mark stitches, and the neck point, find that, apply half of your intake, half an inch in this case. Connect the neck point through that hollowing into the shoulder point. Run a stitch just through the fabric. As you can guess, we are going to do exactly the same on the back because the back also has a shoulder seam. So mark your neck curve, your shoulder curve, that is your shoulder seam, and a little bit of your back side. Find the midpoint, apply that half an inch of hollowing, and go from the neck point into the hollowing into the shoulder point. Now what you're gonna notice is this hollow seam has become even more hollow and this hollow seam has become straight. Thread your needle, just run a base through this new line. Once you're done, do the same on the other side. It's time to shape our fabric. We are going to do an edge to fold transfer and we're going to transfer this concave line by stretching it out onto the surface and change the surface shape. How much are we gonna stretch out? We're gonna stretch out until this concave line turns into a pretty much perfect straight line. Grab your spray bottle, spray the back and the neck. Take the thread end, but allow the thread to be free, okay? Introduce your iron on the line that you have basted, and as you introduce the iron, just give this a little bit of a pull. You are allowed to go past and beyond this line, okay? So don't just stretch this inlay here. Forget about that edge. Your focus has to be on this line. So once you've done that, your line will straighten. That's not enough, however. As soon as we introduce some moisture, it's going to go back. So we have to do this a few times until the fabric stops resisting. Careful, careful, in, and one more time. Now this, of course, depends on what type of fabric you're using. Some fabrics, you can, you can spray them once, shape them once, and they won't go back. 
Some fabrics, on the other hand, you have to do this like three or four times. When it comes to fitting, I try to just do it two or three times and don't overdo it. You never know what you're going to do with this pattern. Some changes, you know, will require you to shift the pattern up and down. And it's best not to fully distort the fabric until you know exactly that it's going to be finished. So, as for now, I think this is fine. The next thing we're going to do is exactly the same with the curve of the neck. We're going to stretch this and we're going to go past the mark stitches by about 5 8 3 quarters maximum up to an inch. Okay, a little bit of moisture, a little bit of stretching and you will stretch until the neck curve is also somewhat straight. Okay, don't overdo it and don't be afraid of shaping a little bit of fabric. If you try to fold along the mark stitches, your fabric should easily roll with you. So you should be able to do that. If I try to do this on this side, because I haven't stretched it, you can see it's very, it's almost Im impossible. The mark stitches just fold along a straight line. It, it's not possible. So compared to that, this is a lot easier. Same goes for our back shoulder. We now have a very curved surface shape. Okay, same goes on this side. So once you have stretched both shoulder seams, make sure you smooth out the areas behind them. So just run with the iron on the transition of where the fabric is flat and turns into shape. And you should have something like this, okay? We have these waves. You can fold back the back shoulder easily along your basting line. That should create a curved surface. Both of them should be pretty much the same. And you should be able to do that roughly with the neck curve as well. The neck curve doesn't need to be 100% folded along the mark stitches, as long as it can easily just do this rolling that I've mentioned, okay? This helps to go up into the neck. The same is gonna happen, of course, on the front. Now, the first thing we have to do on the front, obviously, is to stretch out the canvas. This is a flat canvas, however, it's on the bias. It is on the bias so that we can easily stretch it out. Because there is a limit to how much we can stretch this out, we will stretch out the shoulder, obviously the neck, just like we did on the fabric, but we are also, to some extent, are going to stretch the front side. We are also going to stretch the front side of our fabric a little bit, depending on whether it's needed or not, and the severity of our pad shape. And for those of you who think that the stretching of the shoulder and the front side is going to distort the grain or the checks or the stripe of the fabric, you are 100% correct. However, what you should consider is that they only distort and bend if you assess them flat. Once you've stretched it and the correct shape fills up that space, and you look at that grain in space, so as a three-dimensional object, what you will notice is that your eyes, as an optical illusion, will correct the grain and make it seem straight. You can see the same illusion right here on the side seams or the underarm seams. We have all these hollow seams, but when you sew them together, they appear to be straight, okay? So, let's do this. Flip over the fabric, spray some water, in the entire shoulder area and start by stretching out very carefully all the layers of your shoulder. Now, just like we did on the fabric, we are not interested in this very edge. We are interested more or less into the surface. So don't start on the edge, just go into the surface. Do it carefully. Don't create any pleats and do it in sections and careful for your fingers. You may burn your fingers if you're not careful. Once you've stretched out the canvas, you should be able to create a concave roll. Now, this is not going to be enough yet. We also require to stretch out the neck area. So, apply some moisture. Be careful so that you don't make any pleats in your fabric. Get the bridle out of the way. Introduce your iron from this 
ribbon that we have used to zigzag and slowly start pulling upwards and then go back grab this area and pull downwards and repeat this step just very carefully a few times be careful you don't create any pleats and if you have a light domestic iron you may have to have a lot of patience as well because a light iron is not going to be very suitable for this process so once you've done that you should have your waves right here and a little bit of an upwards movement on the canvas in the neck area okay obviously this is going to go over the shoulder and we want this area to go up into the neck which requires us to stretch this out it's as if we have introduced a wedge here just as i explained in the theory a wedge here and now we also want a forwards shoulder effect which requires us to stretch out the front side apply some moisture and carefully stretch this area out without creating any pleats most of you will just grab the edge of the canvas and try to stretch out the edge but you have to go into the surface as well and sometimes the very edge will pleat and that's okay you can deal with that you can smooth that out later but it's really you have to go into the surface don't remain on the sidelines get into the field as i'm pulling i'm moving the iron back and forth and i feel this cracking effect it's it's almost like a crumpling effect this crumpling sound sensation in my hand that's the canvas and the horsehair stretching out so you can see this entire thing is becoming more and more severe okay not only does this go over the shoulder but it can also go upwards into the neck and into the roped sleeve but it also goes a little bit forwards okay so the wedge or the stretching here creates the forwardness the wedge or the stretching here creates that concave upwards and the one here into the neck i'm going to repeat this a few times get it smooth and then do the same on this side that's how it should look like it should already look like the saddle that it's going to cover all right should go upwards like that upwards like that and i'm going to now do the same on this side you hear that that's the sound you're looking for that's when all the fibers are stretching out be careful you don't rip your fabric trying to achieve the same sound once you've done the canvas it's time to do the fabric you can't stretch on the right side of the fabric so what we have to do is we have to take the shoulders flip everything over like that get the back out of the way and you can pin the canvas against itself so it's not in your way and now what i want you to do is to stretch out the shoulder the neck curve right here and the front side how much should you stretch well this side you have to stretch until it becomes that convex line again here you have to stretch until it goes a little bit upwards how much we will assess in a moment and again this area we're going to stretch until we think it has the same shape as the canvas has okay so you have to remember how much shape you've put in the canvas so that you can put the same on the fabric then we put the fabric on the canvas to see if they marry up nicely then we put both of them on the shoulder pad and if all of that matches perfect if not we'll go back and stretch out a little bit more okay spray and again on the thread line introduce your iron and stretch it's okay to go into the surface but don't go all the way in just stay within an inch lane inch and a half that's two and a half to three centimeters around your thread so you can see it it's getting convex now so once the shoulder is done it's time for the neck if you are struggling that's good it means you're learning something again i'm going beyond the mark stitches not too far down just a little bit over and also i'm not trying to stretch out the gorge of the lapel 
just trying to get this a little bit stretched so that it can move upwards like that okay same thing here on the front side now if you are thinking hey doesn't the front side stretching affect the sleeves yes of course it does so then you might ask well is the sleeve not going to become too small no if it's cut correctly it shouldn't and also this is tailoring that we are doing this is not a course on manufactured garments where everything is engineered that is a different field this is where you have to stretch things out you are here the artist you are the artisan you're not the factory worker trying to just put something together as quickly as possible without any personality in it without anything of your judgment in it this all depends on your skill on the pain you feel when the heat of the iron burns your skin this is the craft okay so you will put the sleeves later on and as you become better and better and i'll talk you through those stages you will know how to adjust a sleeve that is fitted for a pagoda shoulder another thing that i have to mention is a lot of people think in terms of stretching as a line that has a length and the line length lengthens okay that's not how you should think about when you're thinking about stretching you should think about surface shape because every stretching on a piece of material is relative to another area it's that relativity that creates volume and shapes because one area stays the same the other changes and that difference is what creates shape if you've done all the exercises i've shown you you should digest everything i'm saying in a second what are we going to do before we put this on the canvas let's stretch the canvas also from this side while we're at it if for whatever reason you're trying to stretch the fabric or the canvas and the iron sticks to the material and it moves with the material what you can do is to move opposite directions so if my iron and my fabric are together going into one direction put the iron on here pull and move the iron in the opposite direction that should allow you to stretch without anything following uh, the other what's going on here let's have a look well the first thing we're going to assess is whether these two so the fabric and the canvas are pretty much following the same shape they should feel the same in the neck you can see the fabric just lays on the canvas pretty much with the same shape and the same should happen here i can sense there is a difference in the fabric versus the canvas let's look for the rest can we move this over like that it's doing pretty much exactly the same actually this area is not bad you can see a little bit of bubbling here i'm going to rectify this by just stretching this out smoothing it out and if we take our shoulder pad remember the narrower part is for the front the wider part is for the back and if i put this with the mark stitches well the basting stitches roughly on the shoulder pad ends and i try to assess this i try to bend them in my hand into a curve just to see if this is really sitting nicely on the shoulder pad i can say that yes if if the canvas and the fabric are doing exactly what the shoulder pad is doing then you've stretched it enough and you're ready to take it to the next stage i'm going to do exactly the same on the other side and then i'll meet you at the next stage another way of assessing whether you've done everything correctly is to fold this over like that and just bend it in your hand bend it over and have a look see if the fabric and the canvas pretty much look and feel like one do the same with the other side okay now you can also lay it flat move all the length that you have into one direction just like we did with the domet on the shoulder pad remember how we were feeling to see if everything is exactly the same see if this area has the same amount of length see if this area has the same amount of length and the same for the armhole part okay once you're done with that it's time to baste the shoulders 
position the jacket so that the correct side of the forepart matches the correct side of the back. Like that. Flip it over so that you have the back shoulder facing upwards. Then take your thread and pull both ends just so that the thread straightens. Like that. Then take your chalk and mark your neck curve. Just like that, which has now become a straight line. Also mark your basting line, and from that line, mark inwards a seam, which is 3 8 Now you have an intersection of your shoulder seam and your neck curve. Do exactly the same on the shoulder part. So mark your basting, seam in. Because we're going to have a sleeve, mark the armhole and also a seam in. So now you have a crossing here and a crossing here, okay? Do the same on the other side. Once you've marked the front, do exactly the same on the back. So neck curve, basting, seam in, back side, basting, seam in, and seam in. It is now time to base the shoulders. Get the canvas out of the way, only have the fabric right here. Take the back shoulder, thread your needle, make a knot, and I want you to match the intersection of your shoulder seam and your neck curves on both the front and the back. Like that. Just about five millimeters into the neck curve, so in the inlay area, start, put in your needle, and back tack three times. Once, twice, and that's thrice. So there's going to be a lot of pressure here. We require a lot of stability here. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to match the inner crossing that we have marked on both panels. Remember the inner crossing. Pin. Take both ends, pull, anchor them down with your finger. Take the middle, pull the threads, the basting threads that you've created over. Match, pin. Do it one more time. Pull, and now between the two other pins that you have, match, pin. One more time. Pull, hold, match, pin. Now what I want you to do is to draw a chalk line, which is a seam of your basting here. So this basting is the new edge of the pattern, correct? We had that convex and concave line, which were the seam designs. On top of that, we hollowed. That hollowing is marked with the basting here. This is going to be the sewing line on which we are going to baste these two fabrics together. Small basting. Don't give me big plunks. The shoulders are going to just fall apart and the balance of the garment is going to go off and you're not going to understand why that is. Bite size, an eighth of an inch, stitch length, max a quarter, not bigger than that. The reason why we pulled and pinned is to make sure that both shoulder seams are exactly the same length. You should not have one shoulder seam longer than the other one in any way. And because stretching is something that is done manually, maybe one shoulder stretches out a little bit more than the other, but we should not allow them to just be like that. The shoulder ends need to match, the neck points need to match, and that is that. Once you reach the mark stitches of your armhole, go a little bit over that, take your starting point like that and hold it. Really hold it firm and pull the thread just to make sure that the thread is not having any slack in the middle right here. Don't just pull because if you just pull you're just gathering the shoulder. That's not good. So just hold the end, pull the thread like that and then fasten off three times. One, two, three. Now we're going to do exactly the same on the other side. Once you're done and you look at both sides, your sewing line has to be pretty much parallel to that edge of the pattern that you marked previously on both shoulders, okay? Now that you've done that, thread your needle, flip everything over, 
so that you can see the correct side of the fabric. Grab all the inlays of your shoulder seam and fold the edge of your seam with all the inlays towards the back. Your neck points should be matching on the mark stitches and the same goes for your armhole run. Start from the neck point about an eighth away from the edge of the fold, back tack once, small stitching, do a top stitch through all the layers of the fabrics and the inlays. Leave the canvas alone, okay? Now, don't pull this so that all your stitching and your basting is visible. Just let it fold and you continue doing your small basting all the way to the other end. Once you're done, grab your starting point, pull your thread, and back tack once or twice. Do the same on the other side. Now, one thing I have to say, I did mention just let it fold, but don't let it just fold over in any way. You obviously have to clear along this fold and baste, but just don't make your initial basting visible. It is time to have a look at what we've done and then canvas the shoulder area of our jacket. You should already see a saddle-like shape. Obviously, we have a lot of inlay there. That inlay is tying things up a little bit and it's not allowing the entire shape to come out, okay? Once we get to finish the jacket, a lot of the inlay will be trimmed out and everything is going to be cut away and the entire fabric can flow. But for now, this will give us a sufficient reading during the fitting. If you've stretched everything correctly and you've done it exactly to the right amounts, you should be able to hold this in your hands, in the hollow part of your hand, and more or less mimic that pagoda-like shape, okay? So, now it's time to canvas the actual shoulder area. We didn't talk about that at all. What you have to do is to take this basting behind your brake line, the canvassing basting, continue it upwards, and keep that same distance from your neck curve. So about 5 eighths, half an inch. Then create a line along the shoulder all the way to the very end. Take this two inch, this two inch that we marked, and curve it all the way upwards along the armhole. So if you look at the mark stitches of your sleeve run, your armhole run, this line should be parallel to it and blend into the rest like that, okay? Then thread your needle. Put your hands inside with your palms up, okay? So don't, don't do it like this. Don't, don't put it like this, okay? This skinny shoulder, that's stupid, okay? Just put your palms into the shoulder and lift up the fabric and don't do this while allowing the jacket to hang in the air, okay? Do this while resting everything on the table and only the shoulder area is free. Everything else is laying there, nothing is pulling down. If you try to do this up in the air, everything is gonna pull, it's not gonna allow you to move the fabric in the shoulder area freely and therefore find the most appropriate place for it to baste it, okay? So palms up, just kind of like tap it from underneath just every, so that everything is loose. Lift up the fabric only and just allow it to lay on the shoulder, just like that, okay? Then tap the middle as if you're clapping your hands just like this, give it a shoulder tap, well done, well done, okay? Then once you've done that, move from the middle outwards into the neck and the armhole, just like I'm doing. Mimic me. That's it. That's all there is that you have to do. If there is a mismatch between your fabric and your canvas, it's because you haven't stretched them the same amount, or you haven't stretched them enough, or you haven't stretched them in the right areas. So if you've done everything correctly, it should look like this. Then what you'll do is you take the shoulder end, take your hand away, and pin the fabric through the canvas. Then you put your hands in there again. It shouldn't move that much. You grab the middle. Careful that when you bring your arm, nothing moves. It shouldn't because you have the pin here, okay? Like that and put a pin. One more time, clear towards the neck, hold this area, put a pin. So what you are looking for is for the shoulder seam to be roughly speaking a 
curved line. It's going to be a little bit straight, of course, but it should be a little bit curved forwards and the entire shoulder should be able to go upwards into the neck, into the shoulder point and a little bit forwards in this area. OK, so this is what you're going to do, which whatever hand you're basting, the other hand is going to go into the shoulder and you're going to hold this so that your palm is creating a flat surface along the seam and a bend on the front. You understand? Like that. Once you've hold it like that, you will start your basting line through the canvas. Do not do this while the jacket is hanging in the air. Try to keep a small stitch length. And as you get close to the pin, remove the pin. Do not hold the shoulder like this and pin and baste. Okay? Do not try to clear outwards. Do not try to clear and pull inwards. Don't do anything. Let the fabric sit where it has to sit. It's already restricted with a lot of areas, so it can only go to one place, and that's the most appropriate place. And don't try to pull anything and distort. If you get ripples here, the way to deal with it is not to clear outwards. Don't do any of this, okay? Just hold it, baste. Then, once you get to the neck point, back tack. Continue along the shoulder seam, take the pin out, and try to put your needle in and out without bending and crumpling up the shoulder. Keep it exactly as you're holding it, pretty much. Sometimes when I'm holding this up and I want to put the needle through and bring it out, I bring my fingers a little bit inwards like that. You can see my finger moving underneath here, okay? So when I do this, I bring it underneath just to keep it in place and have some resistance from the back as well. Now, don't forget, we have a line here. Once you reach that line, back tack, change sides, and bend this over your hands like this as you base downwards. Again, no need to clear anything. Just let the fabric sit. And when you reach the other basting around the side, back tack twice sometimes three times then make a knot again remove the last pin hold this in place just do a quick baste all the way over to the armhole through the canvas baste down until you reach the front pitch mark on your armhole that's this mark right here this is a temporary base we're going to take this out in a second we need it to mark our armhole so that everything is in place and nothing is distorted. As you can see, we have a weird point here. We are going to correct that point. And therefore, we have to know exactly how the front fabric is behaving and is canvassed, okay? So this is a method on canvassing the shoulders in your hands. You can also do this on the sleeve board. This is how you do it on a sleeve board. Take your sleeve board, find a comfortable way of positioning this for yourself so that you can sew easily. Just like you held it, the sleeve board is now your hand and now you can use both of them, okay? Position this with the seam along the flat side of the narrow part of your sleeve board. If this is too wide, it's gonna be very annoying to work with. So lift up the fabric, make sure nothing is pulling. So don't have this twisted or anything. Just position everything so that the back is loose, the front is loose lift up the fabric and just drop it on the canvas then bend the front shoulder over the sleeve board like this tap clear out clear out that's it this bend will create automatically the correct positioning between them now with chalk you can mark about five eighths away you can continue this run all the way over to the top you can also mark, by the way, before you position, obviously. And that's that. You can see this is already going upwards into the neck. And this is going upwards into the sky. Thread your needle. It doesn't matter where you start. You can start from the neck point area or the armhole. Whatever you do, you have to make sure that this is constantly held in a bend. Why? Well, because this is exactly how it's going to roll over your body if you base this flat or in a weird curve what's going to happen is as soon as the forepart pulls you're going to have a drag here and a drag there and it's not going to look nice 
I'm going to begin here, back tack and move upwards. Again, I'm not trying to clear outwards or anything. Just be careful you don't have your bridle in the way. Back tack when you reach the seam, back tack when you reach the neck point and hold your finger, hold this in a curve and baste through. Same thing again, around the armhole, put a baste through. This is just a temporary baste, but do it while you're holding this in a curve. And that's it. So now you can assess how the shoulder pad will fit in here, roughly speaking. Let's take this part, take our shoulder pad, just to assess the shape. Align this black dot with your seam, okay? Match the other one with the end of the seam and really allow the fabric to lay over the pad, okay? Now, as I said, if there is a lot of inlay, you may see a little bit of inconsistency and not so very smooth line. This is decent. This is pretty smooth for the amount of inlay we have. And here you can see the shoulder curve. If I hold this up, well, then you get to see the first glimpse of how your pagoda shoulder pad should look like, okay? It's very important that you evaluate the shoulder with the shoulder pad in, okay? Never just put your bare hands in there, you know, make all sorts of shapes and try to figure out whether it's correct or not. Your evaluation should be as close to the final result as possible. So how do we evaluate? First things first, palms up so that you mimic the width of the shoulder. Never hold your hands like this and break the pad over it, okay? So palms up, place the pad on the palm of your hand with the seam pretty much running along the center of the length of your hand, okay? Along your middle finger and the wrist. So hold it up like this, and whenever you do that, the first thing that you notice is an extremely elegant upward sweeping curve towards the neck. Pay attention, this curve is not towards the end of the shoulder. We're trying to create a very elegant, stylized garment here and not a diabolic, theatrical uh, shoulder line, okay? It should be elegant and pleasing to the eye. Once you've managed to put the shoulder correctly on the palm of your hand, then I want you to look at your shoulder seam. The thread, the basting thread, that holds the front shoulder and the back shoulder together should not be visible. If it's visible, it means that the basting is too loose, what you have to do is to undo the basting, go back, redo it. Do it properly. Don't try to cheat by pulling the stitches and, you know, distorting everything, okay? If the basting of your shoulder seam is invisible, then it's time to assess the surface shape. So, what do you have to do? Well, depending on how smooth your pad is made, everything should be as smooth as it can get, as if it's marzipan, okay? What you have to do is you take your finger and you gently brush your finger over the surface all the way downwards. What you're looking for is discrepancies between the pad, canvas, and fabric. There should be no bubbles or pulls anywhere on this surface. Obviously, you have got some body canvas there that makes things a bit smoother compared to the back shoulder but there should be no bubbles there should be no tension around your stitching or around your seams if you see any discrepancies any bubbles anything that doesn't make the pad canvas and fabric feel like one chances are that you haven't stretched enough or stretched in the right areas of course depending on what fabric you use some fabrics stretch easier than others, so that might be an issue. But if you're using the same fabric for this practice jacket, everything should feel smooth. If it's not smooth, again, undo the shoulders, go back and stretch as I showed you. Once you've gone through the front shoulder, it's time to turn it around. Again, palms up, place the seam along the length of your hand, like so. Put your other hand inside the other shoulder and slightly pull the two panels away from one another, okay? Just a little bit of tension, don't pull anything. When you do that, you're mimicking the body, taking up the empty spaces of the fabric, okay? So, 
have a look at your back shoulder and see visually whether it's resting beautifully on top of your shoulder pad. Again, if it's not doing that, you probably haven't stretched your back shoulder enough, your back neck enough, or you have too much inlay in your shoulders. Too much inlay doesn't allow you to stretch up and into the surface of the shoulders, which makes shaping of the shoulders a lot more difficult, okay? So, once you have held this up and assessed this visually, and here my fingers are slightly curved upwards to mimic the neck, once you've assessed that, slowly let this go, okay, so that it doesn't fall down too harshly. Then run your fingers gently over your shoulder seam. You should not feel a drumming effect on your shoulder seam. So if this is your pad, your fabric should not be super tightly spanned over it, okay? It should rest as natural as it can be over the pad. Then, just like you did with the front, gently brush your fingers all the way to the back and at some point you're going to feel a ridge. That ridge is the edge of your body canvas which hasn't been trimmed to be smoothly layered to ensure a smooth transition, okay? It's normal for that area to have these tiny amount of ripples that you have here visible in the frame, okay? Ignore that for now, just continue and feel a little bit further down and if everything is smooth well you're ready to go i can imagine that you do this you look at this and you're like whoa yo, this is really exciting and despite some flaws you want to continue please don't do that things won't sort themselves out you have to sort them out okay so only continue if everything that you have in front of you looks as i have in front of me if that's the case, well, let's continue. So, now it is time to mark our armhole. We need to mark our armhole so that we know exactly where the edge of our pad is going to be placed, okay? The first thing you have to do is to make sure, just as a double check, is your neck curve matching up correctly? They should be a continuous join. You should not see your neck point, you know, here and the other one here. There should not be a discrepancy. They should go towards one point. The same should be the case on your armhole right there. If that's not the case, you have to go back and redo your shoulders because you don't want to create a displacement between the shoulders. That's going to create a misbalance in the garment, all right? There are two ways that you can mark your armhole. One is flat on the board. The other one is on the sleeve board. I'm going to do both. Let's start with flat on the board. What you have to do is to position the top part of your shoulder so that it lays completely flat on the board. Now, because we have all this complex shaping going on, it may be confusing for you. I'm not talking about laying the shoulder flat like this. I'm talking about the armhole area of the shoulder, which should lay flat. To achieve this, you have to spread it a little bit, okay? So all the length goes towards the neck, and this area remains flat. Then what you have to do is to mark your mark stitches as they are, and the other one, like so. And if everything is basted correctly, your mark stitches should go towards the same point. Then you will notice that because of that hollowing that we did on the edge of the pattern, we have created a distortion in the continuity of the armhole line. How do we fix this? Well, we fix this by softening this sharp corner. And we do that by connecting, you know, roughly this point and this point together. We may have to narrow the shoulders. That's completely natural and normal to do. And so if we do that to create a very smooth line, we'll notice a narrowing of, in this case, a quarter of an inch, okay? Now, obviously, if you're used to normal, plain, standard shoulders, what you'll see is usually a very straight line. And if you're used to that and you look at this one, you say, well, this is a very snaky run. Should the armhole not just be a complete straight line? Not always. This is a line that looks like a curved line, 
when viewed flat from above. However, whenever the shoulder pad goes in there and we look at this line in space, just like with the grain as I explained, you will perceive this line as a very natural and straight curve, whether you look at it from the top or from the front or from the back, okay? So, once you've done that, you will position the entire front side flat mark and connect to the correction that you made just now, okay? Please use a sharp chalk so that you can see exactly what you're doing. Sometimes when the chalk is not used, it doesn't really mark a definite line, okay? So once you've marked the front side, you will flip the jacket over, position the back side as flat as you can, connect the mark stitches of the side body side, gently lower this area and connect the correction line that you created earlier and bring it all together. It's very important for your armhole run to connect to the top of the side seam, okay? This is the side seam balance line. This is the back pitch balance line. I'm not talking about this one. I'm talking about this one. Your armhole run should intersect with the side seam and the top of the side seam marking, okay? So once you've done everything, you can have a look and see if everything is more or less smoothly transitioning from one end to the other. If you have to correct something slightly, you can do that. But usually if the pattern is done correctly, which is in this case, the mark stitches should really flow from one end to the other with the exception of the shoulder seam right here. So I know that I have cleared this by a quarter. I've corrected this, narrowed this by a quarter. So I will try to do the same on the other side. Before I go on to the other side, this is going to be the next step. Take out the basting that we put right here on the front side. As I mentioned, this was a temporary basting just to keep the fabric in place as we are marking the front side and the entire armhole. Then take your basting thread, take two arm lengths and thread your needle. Then bring both ends of your thread together like so, make a knot. Once you've made a knot, grab the needle, pull both ends so that both threads are now of the same length. Then I want you to mark with your double basting thread the armhole. Now, please don't use your marking thread, which is really thick and fluffy for this. Use your basting thread. You don't want to create too much damage on the fabric. Position the entire jacket as flat as you can in front of you, just like I have done then grab the armhole and start about five millimeters below the edge. Take a bite of a quarter, fasten on, and then enter where the knot is. Enter about three eighths in front. That will create a back tack. And now just continue as a running stitch with a stitch length of a quarter of an inch all the way to the front pitch and where the inlay starts of your front side. I am not drawing this area in. That's extremely important to understand. This entire part of the body where the chest and the armhole and the armpit and the arm are located is a lot of negative surfaces. You do not want to draw this in, okay? This is very important. So negative surfaces require length. Drawing this area in does the opposite. So once you reach where the inlay is, I want you to step over and continue your running stitch on the mark stitches. So why have we done this? It's very simple. There is no inlay here, so I cannot baste on this edge. Therefore, I will just baste a little bit lower and then move over and baste on the actual line. This provides a little bit of stability. I mean, we don't want this to be gathered, but neither do we want this to be completely stretched out to the full although a little bit of stretching out is absolutely fine, if anything necessary. And so that's why we are doing this. Sometimes your threads will not, and one will become longer than the other one. If that happens, just grab the thread from one end, run it through your fingers all the way to the very end until you reach the needle, and then continue. Remember, stitch length is a quarter of an inch, bite size is also pretty much a quarter of an inch. This is going to be our guide for when we are basting the sleeves. 
don't pull too hard don't draw anything in just do a running stitch all the way follow now the corrected line and here go through all the fabrics okay so the inlay is caught as well however please be careful that when you're doing this you are not misaligning or mispositioning all these layers of fabric so sometimes you know if you're holding this awkwardly your upper fabric will go somewhere else and the inlay will be positioned differently so when you base you get like a blip there okay if that's happening to you that means you haven't held everything so that they are doing the one thing and one thing only place your hand underneath it just brush it flat and baste over it on top and as you can see i'm really doing my best to position the garment so that i'm always standing in front of it in this position i don't want to end up like this i don't want to end up like this so you first position the garment then do whatever you have to do if you're too focused on just doing the work the garment will be upside down in all sorts of ways and it's going to control your posture and that is not what we want so running stitch up to this upper balance line which is the back pitch and when you reach the back pitch you're going to do a back stitch so once you do a back stitch you have to come out with a needle about three eighths in front of where your thread is we are now going to do a gentle gather then go over counterclockwise over your needle and pull outwards like this towards your previous stitches you have to remember how much you pull we are going to do a gather from this point slowly increase how much we gather this area is going to have the maximum gather and here we're going to fade off and here it's going to be all flat okay so as i mentioned in the traditional model uh those of you who know you know short 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 long 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 short 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 okay so i'm now going to pull a little bit more than i did previously that's it just a little blip okay one more time now i'm going to pull a little bit more again i'm going through all the inlays keep your stitch bite size three eighths half an inch pull a little bit more pull 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 that's a little bit more and now you can see these ripples are starting to appear go right in front of where your last needle came out half an inch bite size over and pull again a little bit more than the previous one this is going to be the last pull that is going to be a lot and then i'm going to decrease from here onwards so now i have to pull a little bit less okay so this is all muscle memory a little bit less a little bit less and now with the last stitch you're just going to continue as you did with a running stitch again position everything well learn to position things this is extremely important man don't be lazy on it if you're lazy on it you will never be in control it will always be in control of you you will end up with neck aches back aches and sometimes even milkshakes just one back stitch and another one that's it you have now marked your armhole that's the method flat on the board personally i prefer this method because i don't like to take out the sleeve board too much um, but there is nothing wrong in, with taking out your sleeve board and so let's do the same thing on the other side and mark it with a sleeve board you need to have the wider part of your sleeve board facing you so your sleeve board goes through the armhole bring everything on the wider part of the sleeve board again flatten this area and allow everything to go towards the neck okay like that if you do it like that you won't see any twists or whatsoever so keep everything towards the neck flatten this area mark your mark stitches first as they are obviously we are seeing a corner then correct roughly from this area all the way to here we noticed that was about a quarter of an inch so that's probably going to be here somewhere that's it some of you may look at this and think why is he working so inaccurately why is he not measuring the shoulder why is he not trying to get the same shoulder measure why is he just doing it on the go this is a more accurate method for the following reason if i had a shoulder measure and i had to get that shoulder measure exactly right on this pattern first of all i would correct something that isn't really there on the pattern 
If I didn't communicate that correction to the cutter, the cutter would assume that their pattern is perfect. One day, another tailor tries to make the same jacket and everything ends up very differently because that tailor did follow the mark stitches. So while your mark stitches are not the most accurate measure because you know everything changes, you stretch things out, etc., they are the most reliable marking that you have that gets as close as possible to the pattern. So I much rather create the correct line, fit this, see how it looks on the individual, then if this looks better, make the change on the pattern. If it looks worse and it's, for example, too narrow, then at least I know, okay, I have to figure out a way to make this smoother without taking the shoulder in, which essentially means I have to then probably let out the armhole in the lower area and the back side. And you do that by letting out really the side seams in the chest, which I'm not gonna get into. But this is a more accurate way. Plus, measuring the shoulders at the moment is not as important as measuring them in the final analysis when you're actually finishing the garment. This allows me to really make small but yet controlled accidents happen in terms of measures and evaluate. Even if this shoulder is not exactly the same width as the other one, during the fitting I can say, hey, the right shoulder looks better. Let me measure that and see if it's indeed wider or narrower and then apply the same on the other side, okay? So this is controlled artistry. We are engineering as much as we can, but you have to allow some room for happy accidents while you are fully aware of exactly why they occur, okay? So you mark the top, then you move this over. Again, positioning, flatten everything, allow everything to go towards the neck. Do exactly the same thing as we did flat on the board. Mark the mark stitches, connect that to the line that you drew like that. Now you have to really flip the jacket over, allow everything to move over to this side. Again, position it. Don't try to position things without moving the jacket. You know, you have to really allow the jacket to flip over to the other side. Then continue your line, your corrected line, into the mark stitches, into the intersection of the top of the side seam and the side seam, and then into the side body side. Then again, move this over, move this up, connect your mark stitches and into the edge of the pattern. That's it. It's as simple as that. What I would recommend though, is for you to always look at exactly how you're marking this and really evaluate your line. Have a look at it. See if it's really smoothly going from one end to the other. Then look at it from the back. Put this on. Look at it on the body. Look at it with the shoulder pad in. The more you look at this, the more references, visual references that is, you are building in your mind, which allows you to have a more accurate judgment further down the line when you are making more jackets and you have more responsibility. So really get these types of lines in your mind and try to be as fussy about them as possible. Try to really be a perfectionist and then at some point your average will be near perfect rather than your near perfect average. Take this last basting out, which has canvassed the fabric in the shoulder area. Start again. Position. This time I'm starting from the back. I don't want to end up like this, okay? Double length. So one arm length, two arm lengths, thread your needle. And we can start doing exactly the same thing. By the way, I'm taking and basting through these inlays at the underarm seam as well. Just make sure your finger is behind it. Everything is nice and flat and go. No need to back tack here. You can do one if you want, but it's, there's no need. Running stitch, five mil away from the edge. If you see anything fraying, please cut it away. Get into the habit of cutting away things that are fraying because with some fabrics, they will fray all the way and you end up with, you know, having to trim five millimeters from the edge of your uh, fabric and that's going to mess up with the depth of your armhole. Uh, or the width of your seam, okay? So as soon as you get to the inlay area, step over and take a big bite. Half an inch over the needle, pull gently, okay? The first one is going to be very gentle, just a little bit of pulling. Next one, right in front of the thread, half an inch bite, over. Pull a little bit more and as I said, exactly the same way. Gradually fade in, gather more and more with most in this area and to nothing at the back page, like so. You should not see any big pleats. You should just see gentle ripples and waves. Obviously, depending on what fabric you're working on, 
you may or may not be able to gather a lot um, but that's roughly how it should be it's very important to keep your bite sizes as you're doing the gathers large that allows you to have better um, control over how much you're gathering if your bites are too small you will start to gather tiny bits and that's going to turn into puckers and small pleats not good okay continue with a running stitch all the way to the front just as we did with the other side one thing i have to emphasize this area is not gathered this area is not gathered if you remember we stretched this area out this is not gathered the gather is only there to serve this back side part area the transition between the back panel and the side body when that's gathered you know we're going to have a blade here that blade creates a little bit of surplus sometimes it's going to be a lot sometimes not but the minimum we can do along many things is to gather this area to control it a little bit now that's not the only technique that's going to accommodate for that blade there's plenty of other things also incorporated in the pattern but this is something that as a default you can always use this and it's never going to be a bad idea because everyone is a little bit round no matter how straight they stand and uh, whatever their posture is there's always a tiny amount of gathering going on here okay now another thing older tailors will know this sometimes the cutter will give you a sleeve that sleeve is way too big for the armhole and there's no way that you can recut the sleeve because either you don't know how to recut the sleeve or you can't be bothered you, there's no time and so an old trick that tailors used was to simply stretch out the armhole so that it became bigger and therefore the sleeve became closer to that than you know bigger than the armhole and so that was their trick to you know get a big sleeve inside a small armhole by stretching out the armhole do not confuse the stretching that we did here with that silly remedy okay um, we are first and foremost sculpting the anatomy of the shoulder then we fit the sleeve with all the fullness it needs to have to accommodate for that specific shape okay this is going to have a very particular shape and so your sleeve has to reflect that now it's time to grab the sleeve board there's going to be a lot of inlay and a lot of this inlay is also in the canvas it's springy horsehair when we put this pad inside and we sew our sleeves we don't want this horsehair to kind of like push the sleeve upwards we want this to be as if it's trimmed away what do we do well if you've made the traditional model you already know we are going to put the sleeve board into the armhole so that the inside is facing us position everything neatly you can also do it the other way around depending on how you're positioning everything and how you're comfortable and then we are going to fold the canvas over and align it with the basting that has marked the armhole this is what we're going to do allow this to lay flat get it as close as possible okay once you've done that press it with a dry iron and there is going to be a lot of resistance from this piece of inlay so a heavy iron most definitely helps and once you've really held this there for a few seconds move your iron keep it constantly flowing don't keep it on one spot without moving spray a little bit of water on it just on the canvas not on the fabric and press it wet so this is now going to crease everything really in place and if you want you can use your block to dry it off or just blow a few seconds against it okay again keep on moving keep on moving continue further towards the upper edge be careful you're not flattening anything here on the shoulder seam okay just work on the edge lay it all flat like that you know spread it open align and press now another thing which is very important is when you're trying to press this the areas that you haven't pad stitched are going to move independently from one another okay try to really put your finger in there and clear everything against your finger so that when you crease all of them are really creased right on that line and you don't have a gap of materials and their folds and really take your time don't try to press it in three seconds and assume that it's going to lay flat like that okay once you've pressed that you can also immediately compress some of the gathering that you've done here by positioning the armhole and using a pressing cloth of course press that in place it should all press flat you should not see any 
creases or whatsoever or pleats. It's okay if after pressing there is still some you know, ripples visible, but they should not go anywhere beyond 3 8 from your armhole marking. Okay, let's do the other side. Once you press the inlay down, you will be able to fold your fabric over that edge and roughly speaking, your creases should be as close as possible to the marking of your armhole. Okay, check both sides. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Maybe a bit too far in, but it's not going to do much harm. Just, you know, do your best to try to get it as close as you can to the mark stitches and to your basing as possible. This goes way too far out. I'm going to redo this. It really has to be on the edge, okay? Don't, don't think it's going to be fine. There are tolerances, but get it as it should be. Train good habits. To those of you who have gone through the traditional model, one of the tricks I discussed there is the trimming back of the horsehair just a little bit behind the canvas so that it's trapped between the edge of the canvas and the edge of the domet all around here. Look, if you, you see this, this is going to all go poke into the arm of the wearer. Really try to trim all of that away all around here, all around the armhole, because the first impression is not just visual, as I said, it's also how it feels. It's physical as well. So this can rub against the wearer's arm and really start itching uh, or actually hurt. So uh, feel free to do that. I'm not going to do that now because I want to really get through everything untouched without too many fine details. So but this is definitely something to consider doing. If you only have a tiny amount of horsehair inlay here, don't do it in this area. Just do it in the curvy part of the armhole because otherwise it's going to be impossible to really crease this over for the other fittings. It's going to get too small. So steer clear of that. Okay. Now it's time to put the padding. If you've gone through the traditional model, it's going to be exactly the same way. There is nothing different to it except that the pad is a lot more severe. Now, depending on how much intake the pattern of your pad had, it's going to be very extreme or very subtle. The pattern you have in your bundle, as I mentioned, is not very extreme, just so that everything goes easier for you. The one I drafted is a little bit more extreme, so chances are that what I have is a little bit more extreme than you have, but the principle is exactly the same. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to put the pad in there. First of all, make sure you've got the right side. So the bigger part is for the back. The smaller part is for the front. Put the pad in. And the first thing you have to do is to align this black dot with your seam. Okay. Then fold the canvas over the edge of your pad. Okay. So it automatically does that. And push it until it really hits against the canvas and then push it out a little bit more, just about two millimeters more, okay? So it's just a little bit over, okay? Then grab a pin, double check to see if the black dot is really underneath your seam. If that's the case, great stuff. Put a pin straight through the seam, okay? Don't pin it like this. This is too thick to be pinned like that. Just pin all the way through. Be careful for your finger. Once you've done that, it's time to turn the pad, just so grab the canvas and the pad separately from one another so that you can turn the pad and position the pad. You know, you can pull one end to turn the pad the other way. You can pull the other end to turn it the other way. Okay, so here again, it's aligned. You can see the seam is aligned with the black dot. The edge of the pad is about half an inch over as we already anticipated this and once you've done that put your hand underneath there and just tap this a little bit so it sits well and put a pin right behind the neck point this one you can just put through everything like that okay again careful for your fingers move over all the folding of the canvas and allow the canvas to wrap around the edge of the pad do not fold the canvas over itself and then rest it on top of the pad. That's not how we are going to finish the garment. If you do that, it's going to make this very hard and rigid and it's going to give you the false impressions. OK, so once you've done that, the edge of your pad should more or less fall pretty much right behind the mark stitches. So the canvas can wrap around it beautifully. OK, 
put a pin underneath here. So now you have three pins. One, two, three. The last one is going to be the back. Rest the front shoulder and the forepart flat on the board. Release it from tension. You can see this can just, you know, bounce up and down. And clear this. You see how it's being pulled forwards. Just position this by brushing in the direction of the pad without any tension. Okay, don't allow it to fall forwards. Don't pull it backwards. Just as natural as possible. If you flatten it, it should just fall in place and all along your mark stitches. Now, if you remember when we drafted the pad, this was supposed to move over by 3 8 at the top of the side seam or at the back pitch, doesn't really matter. They're very close to one another. And in this case, that's happening, so that's very good. Keep it that way and put a pin right here. So eventually we will end up with four pins. One at the top, one at the neck, one on the front, one on the back. If you move your hands over the surface, it should feel very smooth, just as we evaluated, and it should feel like one. This little wave is right behind the edge of the canvas. I think you can see a line here. So there is a natural gap, but this is going to go away once we trim the canvas and we layer everything into a fade, okay? So now, the next thing. You can feel with your hands underneath the canvas and where the pad is, the edge of the pad. So feel the edge of the pad and try to mark where it is. You can also break the pad or the canvas over the pad. It gives you roughly the location. This has to be just roughly. It's not super accurate. It's kind of like here at the back. It's here. You can fold the cloth around it, feel where it is. Once you've done that, I want you to mark half an inch inwards and make a smooth line. Do not go beyond your neck point. So just curve it off behind your neck point all the way to the end and continue this line where you have based it on towards the back until you intersect with the edge of the pad. Okay. So if I have to mark this a little bit harder, this is how it's going to look like. Okay. Thread your needle arm's length, start at the neck point, go down through all the layers, come back up from underneath on the shoulder seam, okay? Like so, no need for a back tack. Go down, up, down, up, down, all the way to this point where your pad edge is going to be with a stitch length of 3 8 Try to go up and down in such way that you distort this surface shape as minimum as possible. So don't, you know, do this when you're basting. Just try to keep it in the saddle-like shape and finish it as if you are nature itself who is trying to create a saddle-like surface, okay? Untouched. Don't pull too hard, but firm enough for it to hold. And when you reach the end, here, do a back tack. Again, go down, come back up. Now, position the forepart flat on your board. Bring over everything. Positioning is extremely important, okay? So now this looks pretty good. Everything is just resting naturally. And now you can go back down, up, through all layers. Remove this pin so that you don't poke yourself. And... Again, through the entire pad, up, down. Don't just go, as, you know, don't try to take a surface bite like this. Take big bites, big stitch length of 3 eighths. Really go up and down so that everything is held perfectly together and doesn't move. When it gets a little bit thinner, you can go easily from the top through all the layers. Get a back tack in place right here. Take the pin out, reposition, hold it in your hand. If necessary, like so, go through the entire pad, big bite. And if you see that there's going to be a lot of waves and ripples, you can just bend the pad and that bending is going to take up all the empty gaps. Okay. Don't try to position this on a sleeve board or on a ham. Do it in your hand so that you have full control. Position as you continue. Okay. So here we go over the curve again through everything. When you reach this point, take out that pin. Be careful for your finger. 
and here again deep bites and then go up and down this up and down will ensure that when you are going through the construction part everything is held in place nothing moves nothing receives too much tension okay so then here again do a back tack it's important to have that back tack because when you're putting the sleeves in you know this whole area is going to move a lot you can now remove the pin see this area is going to have a lot of pressure on it so having a back tack in place is good and continue upwards until you reach the shoulder seam back tack once that's plenty full loop come back up and snip your thread that's how you insert the pad okay and if everything is done correctly it should have a smooth feel everything should be in the right place and it feels all like one please double check to see if your edge is still you see how perfectly this is kind of like just bending over the thread and the pad is supporting really this entire canvas area it's all against the edge of the of the armhole okay and at the back as well it's not too far out it's just about three eighths at the top of the side seam it can also be just a little bit three eighths at the back of the back pitch it's a very close area a quarter is good three eighths is perfect half an inch is a bit too much but that's fine okay so now if the sleeve goes in we're not going to be troubled with the spring of the horsehair okay so let's do the other side when you do the other side sometimes it's important to bring your arm from one armhole that already has the pad into the other so that everything is supported while you are trying to assess the correct position of the pad okay it's very difficult sometimes to do it like this because this you know look at that that's that's no way can you create that shoulder effect so holding it like that allows you to create a negative surface curve and then do it negative surface curve align the seam with the black dot bend the edge over bring the pad out just a little bit two millimeters just two millimeters pin through align the other side you may struggle with positioning the pad accurately when you put this through this becomes a pivoting point so you can grab just the canvas okay and pull the front of the pad when you do that look the pad rotates if you grab the other end of the pad and you pull again the pad rotates independently from the canvas so try to get that movement really in your hands so that you get used to positioning the pad correctly free of tension and restrictions okay pin through sometimes it may be that your shoulder pad is just a little bit further in on the canvas that's okay as long as it's not any more than quarter of an inch that's fine ideally you want it to be as close as possible and the more you make of these things the more accurate you're going to be if you evaluate your work correctly again clear this on the back so now there is a difference here i'm about three quarters at the base around the top of the side seam and half an inch around the back pitch now i want to get it the same as the other one so i have to turn this so that this is about a quarter here it's okay if your black dots in the neck area slightly shifts to another place that's absolutely fine there's no harm in that there are tolerances and we have to know which ones matter and which ones don't so this time i prioritize the second pin on the back side instead of doing the neck one i've shifted that a little bit to a different location nah, it's pretty much on the same place and now i'm going to go back to the neck point from the back so slightly different order but same principle same movement same result now here i notice that this is going a little bit further down so if i sew my sleeve right here i'm not going to have the 3 8 support of the pad which means i have to take my pins out again this is what you will have to do as well all the time bring it out just a little bit more just a little bit more pin again repeat the process until i get it right now the more you do it of course the faster you will be able to find your way okay another thing when you're positioning your back side you don't want to clear this out like that and distort the grain your back side grain should just fall straight down 
without any distortions all right so that's better now it's really on the edge so again start from the neck point up down all the way to the shoulder back tack on the shoulder end four part down shoulder bend like so see everything is now in the right place you can ignore the edge of the canvas which is creating this dip and again up down up down with a stitch length of three eighths back tack switch hands keep this curved and bent pin out switch hands again now in case you are feeling that the shoulder pad underneath your canvas has some surplus you have to clear that surplus out by flattening it so you have to pull the end so that everything that you're basting is without surplus okay don't baste the let's say the fullness in that's not correct it should all be flat back tack through all layers up and down once and that's it take out all the pins and assess see if really the end is bending over the pad your canvas should wrap around the pad should not be sitting on the pad okay this is extremely important like so everything else at the back should be smooth when you curve and bend the pad in your hand the fabric should just lay there as natural as possible okay the distances should be the same so that's about a quarter on either side half an inch around the top of the side seam and that's really it now a couple of things please go up and down through all the layers of the pad including the canvas the stitching that goes through the seam is also very important many tailors when they are basting their pads in only based for example from the inside this area or they just do a basting right at the back here or right all the way through from here to here the reason why we are basting through the pad along the seam is because that's where we have all the shape and when we are finishing the jacket we will have to permanently stitch this in place so that by the time for example your jacket finds itself under heavy rain and it gets totally soaking wet the contraction that occurs on the layers of the materials doesn't completely influence the canvas so everything is really held together and accentuates that silhouette obviously we're going to stretch to the amount that we can so that there is very little resistance in the fabric but it's good to have this area held together so that the shape of the pad really comes through at the very top layer of your jacket okay now that's pretty much it so if i would lay this jacket as it would be on my body so that means that the center fronts should align together you can see there is a lot going on there is this curve on the shoulder there is a neck okay there are beautiful lapels and the same goes for the back you see that curves there is a neck there's a lot of complexity going on and that's it in the next lesson we're going to go through the theory of the undercolor which is going to be fun and important so that we can later put the undercolor on correctly without frustration see you there and that was shoulders you see after all these theory videos this whole lesson seems pretty simple and straightforward however you may struggle it's not always as simple as it looks my recommendation would be if you struggled with anything in this lesson redo it practice undo the shoulders redo it again do it a hundred times it's all there for practice that being said if we have brought value to you and you like what we're doing and you'd like to support us please help us with a small donation your donation will help us to create more content at a higher quality if that's too much asked at the very least please subscribe and refer us to at least three of your friends that again will help us to grow our channel and to create better content with more interesting topics my name is reza with mowgli behind the camera and we look forward to seeing the next lesson take care my name is Reza with Mowgli behind the camera and we look forward to seeing you soon.